I'm Song Kyung Long Guest. Welcome to Asian at Home. And today I'm going to show you how to make Kamja Tang. This is the Korean neck bone soup with vegetables and some potatoes. I also had this with my friends in Korea during my Life in Korea series. And that one is actually Pyodagi Hejangguk, which is pretty much the same thing, but it made without potato. So, but the one, the recipe I'm sharing today is with the potato. So they're pretty much, I would say same thing, but not the same thing. I don't know how to explain. <laughs> but anyways, let's start to make Kamja Tang. It's so delicious. Couple of things I already prepared. One of them is blanching my Napa cabbage. You will need 15 green outer Napa cabbage leaves. It's about one and a half pound. I cook them in salted boiling water for about two to three minutes. Uh, I'm just gonna set aside over here to let them continuously keep cooling down so we can moving on to the next step with the cabbage. The next one I prepared is pork neck buns. Yes, you will need two and a half pounds of pork neck buns. Nowadays, pork neck bun is really easy to find in any grocery stores, but if you're having a hard time finding it, then you can definitely use um, baby back ribs instead. Add the pork neck bun into the same boiling water where we cook the cabbage. Bring water back to boil, then remove heat from immediately and drain. Rinse pork neck bone under the running cold water to get rid of all the bone bits and any other dirty stuff on the meat. Don't you ever worry about losing flavor, my love. By boiling pork bones only five minutes, it ain't gonna lose any flavor because normally this kind of meat need to boil over hours and hours to get all the flavor out, okay? so. Here, my pork bun is ready and clean and like ready to make the soup, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm gonna set aside right here as well. So when you're done blanching the Napa cabbage and the pork neck buns, next step we need to do is making this flavor, little pla flavor package, flavor package. Did I almost say the flavor? Not flavor, flavor package. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, you will need this little cheesecloth and I'm just going to put one bay leaf, four to five slices of ginger, two green onions. I'm just going to cut it half, like whip it up like a hark <laughs> and just add it in here. Half of medium-sized onion, one burp of garlic that cut it half, tablespoon of black peppercorn. All right, now let's tie them up. This way we can just drop this in and just take this out. How easy, right? <laughs> now in a large pot, place the blanched pork neck bones, two tablespoons of doenjang, Korean fermented soybean paste, one third cup of rice wine, the flavor package, and pour 10 cups of cold water. Stir in the soybean paste into the water, Cover, bring it to boil, then reduce the heat to medium and simmer for one and a half hours. Meanwhile, the soup is boiling, let's toast some wild sesame seeds. You're probably really familiar with regular sesame seeds, but not this wild sesame seeds. It, it looks like almost a chia seed, but when you break into it, it has an amazing nutty fragrance that you cannot get anywhere else. But I understand this ingredient is very authentic ingredients and it's really hard to get it sometimes. Um, you can definitely go ahead and order from online I will do my best to find it from online and put the link down below. So what I did is toast one third cup of white sesame seeds on dry pan over medium high heat for about one to two minutes or until you can smell the aroma. Oh my God. <laughs> Grind in a grinder. I'm just gonna set aside right here and let's make the sauce. We are gonna combine one third cup of gochugaru Korean red pepper flakes, three tablespoons of fish sauce, two tablespoons of doenjang Korean soybean paste, two tablespoons of chopped garlic. It's about six to eight cloves of garlic. Quarter cup of wild sesame seed powder we made earlier, and about three tablespoons of the soup from the pot where we are cooking the pork neck bun to thin it out the sauce. Mix everything together. Oops, I forgot to add some black pepper. 
All right, my sauce is done. That looks be perfect. Okay, I'm gonna just set aside right here and bring the cabbage and a little mixing bowl. Now we are going to rip it up the cabbage just like this. Not too big, not too small, just enough. That's what my mom would say. You now my grandma used to uh, rip it up kimchi like this for me. Ah, good memories. Into the ripped cabbage, we are gonna add about one third of the sauce. I know it might sound weird, but we are going to marinate this cabbage. Just mix in like this. Oh, it's gonna be so good. I can't resist myself tasting one. All right, now you can set aside cabbage right here and let them marinate. And me now, what you can do is prepare your potatoes. I prepared two pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes and I highly recommend to use Yukon Gold potatoes for this recipe because it is the most closest to the Korean potatoes, like the texture wise, the colors and the size and everything. Cut large potato into halves and small potatoes, you can just keep it as a whole. Put it into the water so they won't turn into brown color. My soup has been simmering one and a half hours. Now I'm going to remove the flavor package. Then add the potatoes, marinate the cabbage and the rest of the sauce. And from now, cook another 20 to 30 minutes or until your potato is fully cooked. You can totally eat this kamjatang Korean pork neck bun soup right now as it is in a big bowl with the rice and kimchi and doing all that. But to make this soup even more special, like the Korean restaurant style, they serve on the table and just, you know, cook it and we eat as we go. So I'm going to show you how to develop that restaurant style kamjatang. In a wide shallow pot, place the kamjatang about three quarter way, top with and nip at the Korean wild sesame seeds leaf. If you cannot find this, you can definitely go ahead and use a garlic chive. They works really great on it too. Inoki mushrooms if you like, and the rest of wild sesame seeds powder. Slice the chili peppers and green onions. Serve on a dinner table on top of the portable gas stove. Then bring it to boil. Start the mixing around. Reduce the heat to medium, medium low, and start eating the kamjatang. So this is pretty much what we do. We keep boiling and simmering as we eat. That's how we like it. And just enjoy. When the kamjatang is almost gone, there's another thing you might want to do, which is my favorite part. You know, all Korean food, you can make fried rice after the sauce is left. In my opinion, kamjatang fried rice is the best. I like to combine with cooked rice, some chopped kimchi, green onions, and crushed kim. It's a Korean seasoned and roasted seaweed, sesame seeds, and sesame oil. Just pour the rice mixture into the pot where only a little bit of gamjatang soup left and just fry away. Spread the rice evenly on the bottom of the pot and let it sizzle maybe about two to three minutes. So it will create this crispy bottom rice thing. It's really delicious. If you liked my gamjatang, Korean pork neck bone soup recipe, please give me a thumbs up. And subscribe my channel for more inspirations and idea of Asian home cooking. Thank you so much for watching me today. And remember, you can always cook Asian food at your house, making it easy and fun. I'm Song Kyung Longast, and this is Asian at Home. And I will see you next time. Bye! Mwah.